What's up, guys? Um, I'm doing a video today on Ballastol. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> um, Ballastol has made its appearance many a time on the gun channels of YouTube. Um, highly touted, uh, highly used all over the place. Um, people have had questions about it. Some people never want to give up their old Hoppies number nine or, you know, whatever works for them. They say, boo-hoo to Ballastol because just because a new kid on the block doesn't mean I want to use it. Um, I, uh, I started liking Ballastol just because I got exposed to it and I started using it and I found that it was superior in some cases. What I liked about it, it was a kind of, kind of a, a little of everything. Uh, as opposed to other cleaners and uh, oils and lubricants and stuff like that, they were all specific for, for different chores. Ballastol was something that cleaned your gun, uh, lubricated your gun. You know, it was it was everything you needed to do. And also, you don't have to worry about it eating the wood on your grips. Um, you didn't have to worry about it on, uh, you know, different cases like that. And um, I even did a video using Ballastol to clean my couch, the leather couch that I have. And it worked great. And, you know, honestly, it's really, really amazing stuff. Uh, it's definitely something different. Than everything else and a lot of people will say that it's just hype um, I'm making this video to give you some facts these are facts they're not opinions uh, my opinion is that Ballasol works better than other things um, but that's as much as opinions gonna go in this video I'm gonna give you a bunch of facts and a bunch of paperwork I believe you can get this paperwork uh, if you request it as well from Ballasol directly uh, I have the OSHA sheets on uh, on this stuff to give you Scientific facts. What is it? What's in it? What do you need to know about it? I'm going to read everything you need to know about it and also what it does. Now, um, right on the uh, on the label here, I'll read the label to you first of all. Ballastol Multipurpose Sportsman's Oil. Lubricates, penetrates, cleans, protects, preserves. Firearms, leather, knives, wood, tools, marine, camping, and fishing equipment. No carcinogens, biodegradable. Um, let's see, money back guarantee, yada, yada, yada. Um, and there's a little thing on each blurb on the back here, but, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm going to, well, as far as it can goes. Now, I warn you, this will be uh, a boring video because I'm reading the whole time. That's literally what I'm doing is I'm reading a bunch of information. Uh, I was going to just do like a picture of this and just have the, the sound from the webcam, but last time I did that, when I was talking about the uh, the shooting, um, someone said it was very boring to look at a picture and just listen to me. So they'd rather watch me talk. So <laughs> here I am in all my glory. So uh, yeah, uh, it's basically just an information video. Uh, I think it's fascinating. I think that if you had interest in Ballastol or use it now or was thinking about using it, it'd be a, an interesting video to watch and learn more about it. And who knows, maybe after the end of this video, you say, yep, that's not for me. I like my stuff. And that's totally cool. Uh, I don't care what kind of uh, lubrication you use on your firearms or on your leather. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, I'm sold on this product. I'm sold from personal use. I'm sold from experience. But in learning all this stuff and now presenting to you guys, um, it's pretty cool. It's just cool to know about all this stuff. But anyway, let's get into it. The first thing here is a copy of a certificate from the Dermat... Let me not read backwards because that's not going to work. The uh, Dermatological Test on Humans in 2009. It says the derma... <laughs> There's a lot of big words in this video. The Dermatological Test performed by us on our product under the control of Dermatological Specialists was passed for this product with a rating of very good. This product does not lead to toxic, irritative, or, or excuse me, irritative uh, intolerance reactions in patch testing carried out in accordance with international guidelines. The preparation can therefore be declared as dermatologically tested. What does this mean? It means if you spill this crap all over your skin, totally fine. It's not going to burn you. It's not going to cause any ill effect whatsoever. Good to know. Right, we don't need that paper anymore. Okay, now I'm going to focus a lot on this. This is the actual OSHA printout. Okay, this is all the scientific testing. We're basically breaking it down to its its core components, giving you all the information you need to know about it. Uh, if you ever had any kind of safety things uh, in school or perhaps for your profession, uh, OSHA is annoying. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but OSHA serves a purpose, and it's try to keep people safe. And every time you're dealing with a chemical, whether it is at the workplace, I happen to be exposed to OSHA and all about them and these work uh, printouts and stuff like that. Uh, basically, through my high school classes when I took uh, graphic arts, we had a dark room, and we're dealing with chemicals in the dark room for exposing, um, you know, pictures and photography. And we had to learn all about this crap. Um, sometimes I think OSHA goes overboard, but a lot of people out there would agree that there's no such thing as being too safe. I think sometimes it takes away from the work environment and the productivity of working, but hey, safety above all, right? I mean, anyway. Uh, but it's good because it's just factoids. No opinions here, just completely facts. So we'll go over that in a second. But first, I'm going to bore you with reading all about Ballastol. Um, this is The Amazing Story of Ballastol. Now, there's an introduction. There's the story of its birth, uh, unique features of Ballastol, environmental information, metal information, motor vehicles, wood, electrical equipment, firearms, which are probably pertaining mostly to what you want to hear about, leather, plastic and paints, fishing and boating, the industry, gardening. <sighs> Let's read the firearms first. Um, I'm actually, I'm not going to read all this information because that would just take forever. Uh, you can probably, you know, find this information online somewhere as well. But uh, I will read the 1001 Uses blurb. They give you about 20 or so here. And it's enough to get the mind going because, I mean, really, it's, it's endless, the uh, the uses you can use this for. What's so cool about Bellstall is that I've used this on my guns to clean them. I've used this on my guns to lubricate them. I've used it on the hinges on the doors in my house to keep them from squeaking. I've cleaned my couch with it. You know, I've uh, refinished wood with it. It really is uh, a multitask cleaner, oil, etc. It's pretty cool. But um, yeah, let me read just a couple of these blurbs here. First on firearms, because that's what I think most of you guys are interested in, in it for. Ballastol dissolves traces of lead, copper, zinc, brass, and toneback, which are used to make projectiles and jackets for them. Uh, residues of these metals will remain in the bore of any firearm as a result of shooting jacketed or unjacketed lead projectiles. The use of ballastol minimizes the need for scraping or brushing the bore. Just pour or spray enough ballastol into barrel and chamber. Turn the firearm around several times to allow ballastol to reach all the parts and let it act for a while. Due to its alkaline character, ballastol is ideal for cleaning and maintaining black powder firearms as well. The residues from black powder in chambers and bores are acidic. Ballastol neutralizes and dissolves them. This eliminates the need for aggressive solvents. Using ballastol to maintain wooden gun stocks is particularly recommended in climates with frequent rain and or high relative humidity. Wood absorbs water and swells as a consequence. This, this may mean your stocks become bigger, wider, and longer as they absorb more and more water. Before long, they will no longer fit your gun or even crack. Ballastol will also prevent wood from drying out in hot, arid climates. Okay, now I could read just all this stuff and be a lovely video to just fall asleep to because I know a lot of people just like listening <laughs> and multitasking while they're listening to videos. I'm not going to bore you with all this stuff, but I did want to read the firearms. Um, let's read the gardening because it's like two sentences. Ballastol can be used to protect and lubricate all sorts of gardening tools like scissors. Okay, it's just basically just talking about more tool stuff. Um, I know it doesn't say on here, but I know Ballastol does work for pest control as well. Um, not specifically recommended for spraying on uh, edible stuff, although it is edible in small amounts. Um, wouldn't recommend it, but it is good for pest control on ornamental plants. I know that from a fact because I've used it and it's worked great. Okay, um, let's read about the birth of Ballastol. Okay, I'm not going to give you a whole introduction about everything. What the heck? Let's just read it all. Why not, right? You got nothing better to do but to listen to this long video. Okay, <laughs> I guess you can always click ahead if you don't want to listen to all of it. Here's the introduction. Ballastol, and by the way, I, I, I apologize in advance for stuttering or, or not be able to squeeze out a word all the way. Um, who knows? We'll, we'll see what happens. I, I honestly read this before, but reading out loud is different. Like, I can read normally. And people think I'm illiterate because I can't type well. It's because I'm typing like this really fast through a thousand messages every day. And I don't have time to fix my errors. Anyway, no more excuses. Here we go. Ballastol has been around in Europe uh, for over three generations. Originally invented for military use and it became a household word in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. 
Millions of users have experimented with Ballastol and found new surprising applications for it, some of which reach into the field of veterinary and even human medicine. In the United States, the law prohibits a seller to advertise or recommend a product for use as a drug in human or veterinary medicine, unless it has been approved for these uses by the Food and Drug Administration. Ballastol has not been submitted for approval by the, by the FDA as a drug. In Germany, a modified formula of Ballastol called Neoballastol is admitted for use in veterinary and human medicine. Neoballastol is not sold in the USA, Canada, or Mexico. Um, in 1985, a bottle, a bottle with Ballastol was found in an attic where it has been left for over 60 years. The oil had not hardened and the chemical analysis revealed that it still had the same degree of purity and freshly produced Ballastol. The oil had become a little darker but not even the slightest trace of resinification. Uh, could be discovered. I guess it didn't resonify. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, after World War II, the Cleaver Company conducted a long-term test with Ballastol. Several rifles and shotguns were treated with Ballastol, wrapped in wax and pregnant paper, and stored in a trunk. All this was done under the supervision of a sworn expert for firearms and explosives. After 25 years, the same expert opened the packages and inspected the firearms. Man, that's pretty patient of him. <laughs> Just had to throw that out there. All weapons had uh, remained completely rust-free on the inside and outside. No resinification, that's my hard word of the day, no resinification of ballastol had occurred. After pulling a dry cotton wad through the barrels, several rounds were fired from the weapons without malfunction. Ballastol truly stands the test of time. If something needs long-term preservation, only ballastol will do the job. Wire pulls on motorcycles can be lubricated and maintained in smooth operation with ballastol. A few drops of Ballastol in the last bucket of water when you wash your car will brighten up dull body paint. Dry car and soft cl cotton cloth for better shine. Cleans and maintains all chrome plated parts. If you're a collector of oldies or if you wish to demobilize your vehicle for an extended period of time, Ballastol is for you. Unscrew the spark plugs and pour or spray about one fluid ounce of Ballastol into each cylinder. Then close the opening with the Ballastol soaked cotton cloth. Same applies to winterizing boat or motor, uh, motorcycle motors. Due to its alkalinity, ballastol will neutralize acid residues from fuel and oil combustion and keep cylinders and pistons corrosion free. Ballastol can also be emulsified with water. However, even the milky white emulsif excuse me, emulsion acts as a corrosion protectant. Uh, when the water evaporates, ballastol is left behind and continues to protect. Interesting stuff. For sure. Okay. Um, uh, let's read its birth real quick. And then we'll move on to a couple ways to use this stuff. And then we'll talk about what it actually is. Okay. It's birth. In 1874, Friedrich Wilhelm Cleaver, an attorney with interest in economy, founder, founder of the Cleaver Company in Cologne, Germany. I think it's Cologne. That's how it's spelled. Anyway, he began producing oils and greases from coal and eventually bought a coal mine so he would not run out of raw materials. Uh, at the turn of the century, the Imperial German Army began to look for an all-around oil. The idea was to maintain the metallic parts of the soldier's rifle, but also protect the wooden stocks and his leather gear. The soldier was used to the same oil for treatment of minor wounds, sores, and scratches. Friedrich's son, Dr. Helmut Cleaver, uh, had become a professor of chemistry at the Technical University of Karosh. I'm going to butcher that word. Some German place. Kar Karoshi. Karushki. Okay, uh, that sounds good. He set out to develop uh, what the army wanted. In 1904, he succeeded to produce a special oil, which he named ballastol, uh, from the word ballistic and the Latin word for oil, oleum. Uh, thus, the description meaning of the word or excuse me, this descriptive meaning of the word ballastol is ballistic oil. Let me stop there for a second. Interesting. Now we know, because I had no idea where the name came from. Didn't really care before, but I find that very fascinating. Moving on. Uh, it soon became obvious that the new Wonder Oil has truly, um, has truly amazing capabilities. The Army tested it and adopted it in 1905, and it stayed in use until 1945. But the word had spread, and within a decade, hunters, boaters... Uh, motorists, hikers, mountaineers, and outdoorsmen in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland converted to the new miracle oil. Very, very cool. So it was well known in 1905, before even the 1911 was created. Interesting. I thought this stuff was new. 
Apparently not. Somewhat new, I guess, to the States, but obviously it's been in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland for a long, long time. So if you're wondering what's with the new kid on the block, eh, it's been around way before any of us, way before any of our parents or even our grandparents. So interesting stuff. Okay, moving on. Oh, sorry, I'm in the same paper. All right, now there's a thousand and one uses for uh, ballastol. This is a list of about 20 or so, and just reading this list, it seems worth buying, honestly. And this isn't a big sales pitch. I can care less if you buy the stuff. I'm telling you, it's awesome because I've used it for a variety of things other than guns. Uh, and I have used it for knives as well, as well as, uh, or excuse me, for cleaning them as well as oiling them. Um, but what I did mention before is I love my uh, all my lubricants in those little bottles with the little needle applicator. So um, I may have to, once my bottle goes empty, just replace it, not with the aerosol one, but the liquid version, and just fill up the bottle as a refill. Anyway, okay, what does Valstall do? Here are some examples. Lubricates, hinges, door locks, padlocks, scissors, pocket knives, bicycle chains, roller skates, or blades, sliding doors and windows. It cleans silver and brass. It lubricates moving mechanical parts of typewriters, video cameras, printing calculators, etc. It rejuvenates wood surfaces, especially antique furniture. It cleans and impregnates leather boots, saddles, jackets, motorcycle clothing, saddlebags, hoisters, holsters, slings, and belts. Keeps battery terminals free of corrosion and neutralizes spilled acid. Removes tar and insect stains from motor vehicles. Inhibits corrosion from salt and salt water. Winterizes motors and neutralizes acidic residues from fuel combustion in engines. Helps extract water from fuel tanks. Shines gel coat and fiberglass boats, protects electrical contacts on boats and trailers, lubricates plastic and metal zippers, lubricates fishing reels, removes traces of lead, copper, and tone back from bores and chambers of firearms, seals and protects wood stocks of firearms, neutralizes acidic residues and black powder guns, removes hard bakes spot on from glass doors and fireplaces and wood stoves, removes ballpoint bending, <laughs> here's one, removes ballpoint pen ink from smooth surfaces. Did you know that? Me neither. Just do. I mean, I, I learned it now. How about that? Frees calcium locked faucets. Cleans and stings, excuse me, cleans and strings the fret, cleans the strings and fretboards of guitars and other stringed instruments. Increases performance of CO2 model airplane motors. The list goes on. I don't have time to read all of it. But I can tell you, it's pretty cool stuff. Okay. As to as to not make a video that's hours long, let's talk about the OSHA report, okay? Want to know more about this amazing crap? Let's learn together. Okay, so where is it made? It's made in Washington, or who's it made by? Washington Trading Company, Incorporated, Ballastol, USA. Their address, one Cypress Knee Trail in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. In case you're wondering, that's where it's made. All right, ballast product. The ballastol is an alkaline emulsifying oily cleaner and lubricant as well as a corrosion inhibitor. Cool. Hazardous ingredients information. Ballastol does not contain any components classified hazardous by OSHA. Ballastol contains only one ingredient with TLVs. Now, there is a key here for terms. Let's see what a TLV is. Threshold limit value. Okay. The one TLV is isobutyl alcohol, which is still not considered hazardous. All right, fire and explosion information. Um, flashpoint is 52 degrees Celsius or 126 Fahrenheit. Um, fl flammable limits, there's not applicable. Extinguishing media, in case it ever did caught, catch fire, foam, carbon dioxide, or water, all work. Um, all right, special firefighting procedures. Do not use dry powder uh, as an extinguishing medium. Wear protective, blah, blah, blah. All right, all self-explanatory there. Appearance, yellowishy, yellowishy oil. The odor, licorice. Licorice? Let's see. Eh. Some people say it smells. I actually don't think it smells that bad. It's not a particularly wonderful smell. I don't, like, spray it on stuff and go, hmm, but it's not... Off-putting. I don't know about licorice. I don't know who wrote that down. Uh, I don't know. It smells like... Uh, it smells kind of like wood. Like if you get fresh cut wood, it kind of smells like that. I guess in a little bit of licorice. Anyway. <laughs> I don't really care what it smells like. 
Okay, uh, health hazard data. Boop, 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 boop. Um, okay, carcin. Here's another big old word. Carcinogenicity. I think I said that right. Okay, no NTP publication. NTP. Not on the key. Okay. No IARC monograph. What does that mean? Oh. No International Agency for Research on Cancer. Okay, so none of that. But Ballastol is based on medical grade white mineral oil. In case you're wondering, that's what it's mainly made out of. Medical grade white mineral oil, which has been classified class three by the International what was it? International Agency of Research on Cancer. This means that there is insufficient evidence for the substance to cause cancer in animals or humans. Balasol does not contain any substance currently known to be a carcinogen. Cool. You won't get cancer from it. Good information. Informazione. Okay. Um, no information on safe handling. It's totally safe to handle. Okay. Basically, all right, here, disclaimer. Uh, does that have any information on it? I'm trying to give you good information here, and a lot of it, like, <laughs> it doesn't mean anything to anyone who's not a scientist. So I'm trying to, basically what they're saying here is that it's totally cool. There's nothing hazardous about it, except for the aerosol version has all the inherent dangers of aerosol, such as flammable um, because of the, you know, the, um, what's the word? Whatever makes it spray out. I'm having a blank here. But yes, any aerosol, anything, you can hold a lighter up or hold it to flame and it will be flammable or explosive if, you know, put in the hot sun for a long time or thrown in a fire. That's any aerosol can ever. All right. But they're saying the contents of it is fine. What I did get from this, though, is that the aerosol version is slightly watered down to be thinned out so that it actually doesn't clog. So that's interesting. So if you have to pick between an aerosol version and just the liquid version, you're getting more of the actual active stuff in the liquid version. So it's not as convenient, but it's more viscous, I guess, thicker. The viscosity is thicker. So take that for what it's worth. Okay, moving on. Boop, 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 boop. Um, yeah, basically it says balsol aerosol contains A70, a butane, which is a propane blend, as a propellant. Okay, here's the contents of balsol. This is what everything that's disclosed that's actually in balsol. Balsol contains medical grade mineral oil, which is basically the main ingredient, alkaline salts of oleic acid, several alcohols, uh, benzyl acetate, and an oil from vegetable seeds. The mineral oil is a unchlorinated and conforms, oh, excuse me, the mineral oil is unchlorinated and conforms to the specifications of U.S. Pharmaceutical XX, whatever that means. Hmm. Electrical properties of Ballastol. Ballastol has a comparatively high dielectric strength. Its electric conductivity is 0 0.005 micro siemens, <laughs> giggle giggle, uh, per centimeter. This is 1 60th of the electrical conductivity of water, which is 0 0.3 micro siemens, <laughs> giggle giggle again. All right, so what does that mean? Undilated and unemulsified ballastol has an ohmic resistance of approximately 800 kilo ohms. <laughs> All the scientists are going, interesting. Everyone else is going, what? So here, here's the, I like the, like the, <laughs> afterwards there's a, a sentence here for like the uneducated, I suppose, or the unextra educated in science uh, or chemistry for that matter. All right, so for all of us in layman's terms, for most practical purposes, ballastol can be considered a non-conductor. However, ballastol does have the characteristics of a weak electrolyte due to the free ions contained in it. This characteristic diminishes with age and will extend exposure to acidic environments. It increases when ballastol is emulsified with water. So, reading on, okay. Therefore, ballastol in its non-emulsified form, meaning straight, not mixed with water, 
will not interfere with the flow of electric current in electrical networks or devices. It will not normally build electrical bridges or cause creeping currents uh, or short circuit to occur even if applied directly on electrical equipment while energized. Ballastol should not be applied to electrical or electronic equipment with, or excuse me, while water and a high degree of moisture are present in the equipment. What does that mean? Even more simplified for people like me. That means if you got something electric that you have to clean, like for example, let's say you're cleaning a bunch of crap on the inside of your vehicle and then, I don't know, it gets on the battery or something, or any of your electrical wires, Totally cool. It's not going to interfere with the electrical current, which is awesome. And in fact, one of the uses is to take off the uh, corrosion around your positive and negative terminals on your car battery. So if that gets a bunch of white, crappy, weird buildup and, uh, you know, messes with the battery, you can use that to clean it as well as prevent future rust and corrosion. Awesome thumbs up. Okay. Um... Compatibility with ba a ballastol with other materials, or yeah, other materials. Ballastol is fully compatible with all metals, including aluminum. However, ballastol does dissolve traces of copper, zinc, lead, and tone back, and therefore can also be used to clean brass, bronze, and silver. So, for all the people who watched my very few metals videos, which I hope to make more of in the future, you can use ballastol to clean your silver, which is very cool too. Okay. Ballastol can be used on all smooth leathers. It uses uh, its use on suede is not recommended uh, since it will spoil, or excuse me, since it will spoil its looks. Ballastol can be emulsified with water and mixed with gasoline, diesel, fuel, or antifreeze. Ballastol will chemically interact with the partially or fully neutralized substances of an acidic nature, such as but not limited to human sweat, battery fluid, residues from tannic acid in leather. Okay, um, what else? Ballastol as a corrosion inhibitor. Most corrosion inhibiting lubricants can only protect against normal oxidation. They do so by covering up the surface which they are supposed to protect and prevent contact with water and air. Due to its alkalinity, ballastol can also protect against galvic, excuse me, galvanic corrosion, or galvanic corrosion, excuse me again, it's a double excuse me, Acidic corrosion and saltwater corrosion. Ballastol contains oxygen binders. They make the oxygen contained in water or air unavailable for oxidation. Due to its low surface tension, ballastol is capable of creeping into the smallest openings, even against gravity. Wow, that's magical. Accordingly, ballastol provides not only passive, but also active protection against corrosion. However, ballastol is not a permanent coating or paint. Its protective effect will be the stronger the more often it's reapplied. So that's pretty cool to know um, is that it's a step above other oils and stuff like that. It's not only protecting against um, normal oxidation or rusting, it's also protecting against corrosion in many different ways. Okay, so basically it has the properties of being uh, having an alkaline in it, if that makes sense. So it is better than a lot of other oils for that purpose. Um, moving on. I don't know how great this video is or how you can follow along with my improper reading, but hopefully you're picking up on some of this cool stuff because it's pretty cool. All right. Now, here's a section I have to read. Now, it's horrible for laughing because I, I feel horrible about this. But when I first read this, I cracked up. Then I read it again and went, what? Why? That's messed up. So I'm going to read it to you guys and then we'll talk about it a little bit. All right, non-toxicity. In experiments with rats and rabbits, and the animal's entire intestinal tracti and stomach were filled with ballastol. The animal showed signs of uneasiness. No crap. After the ballastol has been evacuated from their bodies as provided for by nature, I love that. All right, scientists, right? It's got to be proper. It's got to be PC. They can't say... Eh, all the rats took a dump. We got all the ballastol out. No, they have to say, after the ballastol has been evacuated from their bodies as provided for by nature. I love that. Um, that's what I laughed at most here. I wish I could say that like, like, uh, you know, I don't know. I got a bad stomach ache from a, a burrito and someone knows about it and they ask me later, Jeff, how you doing? And I say, oh, I took a huge crap. And I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me rephrase that. That burrito was evacuated from my body as provided for by nature. 
Okay, anyway, uh, the animals without exception appeared to be in excellent condition and showed no adverse prolonged side effects. It was not possible to establish an LD50. What is an LD50? Let's refer to those notes again. Uh, a median lethal dose. Okay, so basically they couldn't tell how much this stuff would actually take to kill a rabbit or a rat. But they did fill their stomachs and intestinal tracti with ballistol. That's horrible. That's I mean I know we have to test like on like we have to test in general, but I just picture this poor little rat and they're just just filling its stomach up and intestine what what did I say? Intestinal tracti, sorry, with ballistol. Just to see if it's gonna hurt them. And that, another favorite line. The animal showed sign of uneasiness. Wouldn't anything living on this planet show a little uneasiness if they're completely filled with something for testing? Ridiculous. Anyway, ballistol does not contain ingredients considered hazardous by OSHA. It does not contain any ingredients which normally may be considered harmful or fatal if swallowed. But do not induce vomiting. Aspiration can occur. Consult a physician immediately. It does not contain any ingredient in which may be toxic for warm-blooded organisms, reptiles, or aquatic organisms, if used as directed. However, ballistol may kill small insects such as aphids, mites, chiggers, ants, termites, spiders, or wasps by mechanically clogging up the respiratory systems, as most oils will. Also interesting. So I guess it's good bug spray if you got the aerosol one. You can just kind of spritz it in the air and no more bugs because they can't breathe anymore. All interesting information. So, hmm, what else do we have in here? Uh, as we talked about before, Balsol does not contain any ingredients known to cause cancer. Balsol aerosols do contain uh, CFCs. The isohexane contained in Balsol aerosols is a thinner, contains blah, 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 blah. Everything's biodegradable. Everything's awesome. What else do we have here? Uh, oh, here's more uh, a, a printout of more of the components of Alstol. So let me read this real quick. Um, the components of Alstol, while the FTC demands that the, the product must break down and return to nature, it does apparently not consider the possibility that a product might consist of components which are already nature substances or their equivalents. Many of the substances which are found in nature are complex chemical chemicals and they are broken down in other uh, into other chemicals which they decompose. For example, when an apple decomposes, alcohols form which decompose into other chemicals or react with other chemicals to form uh, tertiary compounds. It appears to be within the logic of the FTC's definition that there would be no need to prove the breakdown and return by nature for any substance which is already natural substance or its equivalent. <laughs> Okay, ballistol contains the following ingredients. Mineral oil, potassium oleate, ammonium oleate, uh, oleic acid, benzyl alcohol, amyl alcohol, isobutyl alcohol, benzyl acetate, anethyl, and isonane, which is an aerosol. Oh, only in the aerosol. That's the thinner that allows it to spray out so it doesn't clog. These substances are either natural substances or they are chemically are chemical equivalents of natural substances. For example, an alcohol is a natural substance regardless of whether it is produced in a laboratory, in a distillery, or in a rotting apple under an apple tree. Extremely versatile. Sold. Completely sold. Uh, but not by reading this stuff. Like I said, uh, I've used it plenty of times for a variety of things, and I've always been happy with it. So thought I'd make the video and uh, inform you guys of some stuff. Some stuff you really just don't care to know. <laughs> and other stuff that you hopefully found interesting. Either way, I hope you enjoy the video, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you soon in a new video. That's just kind of